Hey everybody, this is just going to be a quick episode for anybody who wonders what kind of uh, work or knowledge it takes to install a solar system in a remote cabin. This cabin here, our closest neighbor, is probably 10 kilometers away. There's as much, just a bunch of remote cabins up here. We're 20 kilometers from the nearest highway, ATV access only. So I'm just going to walk around through our solar system and do you show you a quick idea of what it is. This is the cabin here, this is the halfway in. That's what we call it. So right here, these are the two solar panels I put up on these panels. So you have a positive and a negative coming out of each panel. So all you need is two connectors like this. These plug into both panels. And then these ends here, one is positive, one is negative. These are both marked right here, red and black. So you plug your two panels into here, and then you just have a positive and a negative to come out. Then you have to buy an extension to go into your regulator inside the cabin. We'll go inside now and I'll show you how it works in there. So I will mention that this entire system is wired. Uh, I did it using an automotive system. It's all 12 volt. That uh, requires a much less drain on the batteries. My lights average about, uh, the average I think 10 watts per light. And I've got six lights in the cabin and one inside. So it's a total of about 60 watts. That's the equivalent of one normal uh, incandescent household light bulb. So it's a very little dry on the system. And uh, it works really efficient. The wires you need is like uh, uh, 10 gauge wires, plenty big, probably a 12. Uh, you want to check those codes yourself just to make sure you don't overload your fuses. But I, I think I use a 12 gauge wire. It's basically the automotive wiring you would use. So as you can see, there's all kinds of stuff in here. It all runs off of the 12 volt. I've got a, I got an over sink light here for doing dishes. And I've got an under sink, uh, under stove light right here. So all this runs off the battery. And right here, I have a 12 volt water pump. So I have running water, it just pumps out of a rain catch barrel inside. All that works on a 12 volt, the same as an RV. It's totally awesome. I put a switch here so that it doesn't overload the system if the pressure valve doesn't cut out on the pump. And the pump is under here. I'll show you that in just a, just a minute. So right here, this is the entire solar system minus the battery. So these two wires here are the two, these two ends that come in from your two solar panels outside. And when you buy a regulator, you can just buy a solar regulator. I do recommend them buying a good one. I bought one off Amazon and it actually failed after two years. So I went to a solar store, bought what they recommended. It cost about 110 bucks for that regulator. And it's all marked right here, your connections. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you have your solar panel that goes in. You have your battery connection. So I have a 10 gauge wire that goes from the regulator, runs down to the battery. That goes direct to the battery. And then there's also a power output right here that goes into my fuse panel. So these wires here, it looks like a little bit of a mess, but basically it's six circuits. I ran the water pump and my radio on a separate circuit and I ran the lights on one circuit. And if you calculate the amperages that are allowed for those wires, it, it, they're plenty big, it's not an issue. It's very little. So the other thing that you need is uh, you need your batteries. And obviously, as I just said, this regulator right here, one wire goes to the battery. So that actually feeds in both directions. When uh, the solar panels are charging, it actually regulates the power back and forth from the battery to the solar panel. So it's only one set of wires and the regulator does all the controls. So I just ran two wires from the battery input output and I ran it down here to my battery. So as you can see, I have my big, this is actually just a regular, it's a heavy duty, I think it's a thousand cranking amp uh, truck battery. It's what I actually got for cheap. I would recommend if you have the money, buy a lithium battery, or at the very least buy a big heavy deep cycle battery because they're meant more for the up and down charging. But as you can see, I have my positive and my negative here. They just run to the panel. And down here, if you look up in here, this is my 12 volt RV pump right here. That's run on the separate circuit. That runs my water in the cabin. So that right there, folks, is uh, that's the entire system. It's, it's not very complicated. I installed uh, two panels, and my intention is to put another battery here. That regulator can handle 600 watts of panels, and they're 100 watts each. So I have 200 watts of panels and one battery. I could certainly upgrade the system with another panel, but for my use, it's not necessary. But in the future, we will put in another battery. Just so if you're here for like in the winter time when it gets dark at four o'clock, we'll make sure we have enough power to last the full night. But as of right now, knock on wood, this system with one battery and I mean, obviously we're not overdoing it with the water pump because that's a fairly high energy draw. But uh, aside from that, we pretty much just use the lights as we want to use them. We don't really conserve power. 
uh, either the winter time when we've been up here, we turn the lights down at six o'clock, we're half and up for six hours, having a bite to eat, maybe a beer, and generally had no issues with the system. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to do. If anybody has any questions about how I did this, or something that they didn't see and they'd like to know, or any uh, specific questions about my thoughts on the system, make sure you drop a line in the comment and let me know what you think. Uh, I'll try and leave some of the part descriptions for some of the stuff that I used, uh, the stuff on Amazon, I'll see if I can find a good regulator. I'll put a couple of uh, part links in the description there that you can click on. And uh, you want to do it, give me a shout. I'm more than happy to help you out. And also, if you like this content, I'd greatly appreciate it if you uh, hit the notification buttons there, have that turned on, and subscribe to Angling and Arrows on YouTube. And also, you can find us on Instagram. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay safe, and I hope you don't find yourself in the dark this winter. Uh, it's, I forget the name of what it's called. There's a special, there's a special name on the kind of wire. But it's attached they come with your solar panels aside from that we pretty much just use the lights as we want to use them we don't really conserve power if it gets dark we'll all use flashlights or go to bed if you're close enough to your panels you may be able to reach well you would still need the joiner so the positive and the negative come out of so you plug your two panels into here